And we are live on Facebook. Uh, greetings, everyone. I want to welcome the executive director of the New Jersey Right to Life, Marie Tazy. Marie, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, JR. And of course, uh, we all know that you've been working very hard, and all of us who are defending life are. And I wanted to start the, the program today, Marie, by talking about this very, very um, unique time that we're in between an election's results and then bringing in the new um, the new legislators and some of the new electors. And we call this period of time the lame duck sessions. That's right. And uh, we're very concerned about and we're very concerned about A3030, uh, S4848, which has been inappropriately named the Reproductive Freedom Act. Mm -hmm. However, we call it something very, very different because it has to do with taking the life of the child in its mother's womb. So tell us what you know about a possible vote, uh, proposed vote on that, and mm -hmm. why it's, it's going to be so important for the citizens to contact their representatives mm -hmm. and tell them no on this legislation. Well, right now, as you mentioned, JR, we're in the lame duck session, and this is a very dangerous period. It's when um, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, there's, it's, it's a time in between the last election and when the new legislature is sworn in. So a lot of the legislators that did win re-election um, have nothing to lose and, and where they might normally not vote for bills are now going to be making deals. Um, you know, voting for bills to get certain appointments and assignments and things of that nature. So it, it's a very dangerous time. It's also a very dangerous time because it's right after, right in between the holidays when so many people are so busy, um, you know, with their families and decorations and, you know, store, buying stuff, you know, their gifts in the stores and everything. And they're preoccupied and they know that. And that's when they usually try to ram through very controversial legislation. So we are very concerned. We are watching this period very closely. Um, we know that Planned Parenthood <clears throat> plans to be down at the state house um, lobbying lawmakers in the halls and demanding passage of this draconian Reproductive Freedom Act. Um, we just learned today, a little while ago, um, that the um, the uh, committees in the assembly that are meeting on Monday will be doing it remotely um, because many of the assembly Republicans yesterday refused to acquiesce to um, unenforceable rules put forward by an unelected body that required certain um, requirements with regard to vaccines and testing mm -hmm. and, that and that nature. And the Democrats mm -hmm. are very upset about it. So now they're uh, saying that the committee hearings for the assembly on Monday and all next week will be held remotely. Um, that does not apply to the Senate. So the Senate uh, committees will still be uh, meeting in person. Um, so again, we're watching um, this very closely. Both the Senate and the assembly committee health committees are meeting on Monday. That is where the reproductive freedom bill sits currently. It has not at this point been scheduled for a hearing but there's always the possibility that they could schedule it very last minute. So we're watching it very closely. That's right, Marie, after they schedule it, how soon can they vote on it? Well, they, can, um, they would have to schedule a hearing. And then if the bill is released from committee, they could then schedule it for a hearing, I believe in the next, I think 24 to 48 hours, uh, it would go on third reading. Um, so it could potentially be up for a vote uh, the next um, assembly voting session, which according to the calendar looks like um, it could be December 16th. That's if they vote on the bills before, um, anytime before the 14th of December. Right, so there's still, it, there's still, it still gives us time, it still gives us the citizens of New Jersey um, time to contact their local representatives mm -hmm. and tell them that uh, they don't want to see this unjust legislation um, um, passed. And a lot of it has to do, Marie, as we've talked about before, is um, relevant to what's happening now with the Dobbs versus Mississippi women's health care um, uh, case that was uh, heard, the oral arguments, which we'll talk about. Uh, there's a great fear amongst Phil Murphy and the Democrats that Roe v. Wade may be indeed uh, overturned. And this uh, Reproductive Freedom Act, as it's called, is a, 
is a way or supposed to be a means by which to codify Roe v. Wade and keep Roe v. Wade relevant even if the court overturns Roe v. Wade, correct? Correct. Um, what should happen, I mean, if the court overturned the decision is that it should go back to the states and the people yes. should be allowed to have a voice through their elected representatives. That is what should happen. What this Reproductive yes. Freedom Act seeks to do is prevent that from happening, preventing preventing yes. any opportunity of the people to have a voice through their elected representatives. It wants to take it out of the hands of the people, uh, out of the hands of, of any future legislatures and says, no, we are the kingmakers right now. We are the people in power and the heck with all of you. Yep. This is what we wanna do. And we wanna not only pass this extreme bill that goes beyond Roe versus Wade, but we wanna prevent any future legislatures and any future citizens of this state from ever having a say on this important issue. That's right. I hope that the people out there are listening very carefully to what you just said and that they will share this with their friends and their family and contact their representatives and let them know that no is the vote for A3030, S4848. Very, very important. And Marie, also touch upon actually, the other. Actually, Jay, the other it's, it's, it have it backwards. I think it's S3030, A4848. It's okay, S3030. No, that's okay. S30, but I thought I want to just make sure everybody has the bill numbers. S3030, A4848. Very good. There you have. So S means the Senate and this A is for the right. assembly. That's the, that's the uh, bills as they are uh, identified. But Marie also touch upon the other aspects of this bill. It would allow people who are not physicians to give abortions. Number one. Right. So, and so, won't it also go ahead? No, you go ahead. Finish your sentence. Now, I wanted to, I wanted yeah. to ask you. We're we're going to talk about this term viability because a lot of people don't understand what that mm -hmm. means. We got to go back to Roe. We have got to go back to Casey a little bit to talk about that. But wouldn't right. this particular bill extend the 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 period or th bring out the period of uh, viability to where viability really wouldn't matter that a woman in New Jersey would be able to get a, a abortion after what would be termed 24 weeks of viability. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, see, the interesting thing about New Jersey is that um, the board of medical examiners are, are what regulated abortion in New Jersey up to this point. And um, the board of medical examiners laid out um, the type of abortions and what stage of development they can be performed. Um, and it never actually cut it off at any period and said, after 24 weeks, you know, you can't do it. It just basically left right. it kind of open. So the way that you interpret that is that it would, al it would allow abortions the entire nine months of pregnancy in New Jersey. Um, however, that did not prevent New Jersey from ever passing bans on, on late-term abortion. Um, what this Reproductive Freedom Act would do is it would do that. It would precisely prevent any opportunity to pass any bans on late-term abortions, which we know are supported by the majority of people. A lot of people don't understand that Roe versus Wade um, didn't just allow abortions the first three months of pregnancy, it allowed it up to viability for the life or health of the mm -hmm. mother. And health um, was defined by the courts to be any reason, emotional, psychological, familial, and the woman's health, all factors relevant to her well-being, therefore, allowing abortions the entire nine months of pregnancy. Um, but in New Jersey, you know, a recent court decision, um, the uh, um, Gonzalez case did ban mm -hmm. partial birth abortion throughout the country. And that is one type of late term procedure that is banned in New Jersey, as well as other, the other states in this country. So, but the Reproductive Freedom Act specifically um, uh, excludes the partial birth abortion ban act in, in the actual language of the bill. It would, again, right. just completely, it tries, to, it tries to invalidate it. Whether or not it would be deemed constitutional is another matter, but they really went all out. This is a very extreme bill. I mean, they, they went for the whole gamut here. Um, and beyond nine months, there's language in the bill that whether intended or not would um, re would actually exempt prosecution for uh, a, a, anyone, a, a mother who were to give birth to a baby and either leave it to die, okay, in an uh, unsafe environment, um, or mm -hmm. if they took a deliberate act to end the life of the child, 
they would not be prosecuted. They, it also removes the requirement that an autopsy be done on a fetal death that occurs without medical attendance. Um, so you might say, well, you know, what's the reason for that? Well, the only thing I can think of is that when you do an autopsy, you can tell if a baby's been born, if the baby took its, his or her first breath. So if you're eliminating right. that opportunity, you, <laughs> you know, you can't prove whether the baby died in utero or after the baby was born. And again, you're exempting prosecution. So no matter what they say they intended to do, this is the reality. And we have to also remember that the language in the bill says that this bill should be liberally construed to effectuate its purposes. And that is a signal, red signal to any liberal court that whatever you think is in here is in here, okay? So unless it's explicitly you know, stated, guess what? This is how it could be um, you know, interpreted. Hmm. One of the um, ideas that we were suggesting to why this legislation is so important to uh, the Democrats and Phil Murphy and you know, Loretta Weinberg, the, the bill sponsor, uh, maybe perhaps because of how lucrative the fetal um, tissue business has become an uh, unrighteous and evil uh, endeavor. And that may be an impetus behind why they want to push this bill through. Um, and this is a matter of justice uh, in stopping this bill and stopping this, uh, these ideas and trying to make money off of the murdered bodies of babies is unconscionable. It and it is a very real suggestion. Absolutely. And the University of Pittsburgh is doing some really horrific um, research using the organs, um, body organs and uh, body parts of babies. And um, most recently they, um, it was revealed that one of the studies that they were doing, they were specifically targeting the reproductive organs of African-American aborted babies. African-American oh. aborted babies. Oh, you wanna talk about racism? Um, and we know that such a large majority of, of babies that are aborted are among the African-American community. Um, it's just horrific. There are pictures that show that they actually were taking the, the hair from the scalps of aborted babies, whatever hair was on these little babies, and implanting mm. them, the scalps, onto mice to humanize the mice. And there's pictures of the mice with the hair growing on their scalps. Oh, it, it's my. like something out of science fiction. You know, it's worse than it Frankenstein is. science. It's it, it just so repulsive. Um, and this is the type of things that are going on in our country today. And there is big money um, in the sale of fetal tissue and organs. And of course, you know, the more mature the, um, the baby in the womb is, you know, obviously the, the more desirable, you know, the need to, to use the organs. Um, right. So uh, and, I know Dr. Also, Ray talked about what, what one yeah. little vial of, you know, aborted baby liver goes for, you know, it's incredible the amount yeah. of money that they get for this, yeah. That's right. Of course, we've had Dr. Kathleen Roddy on, and she, she, she was the one who suggested that this may be the impetus why this bill needs to be passed, because New Jersey, obviously, has been a very, um, it's been an easy state to get abortions in, and the legislature hasn't been able to do anything about it for, for uh, many decades. But, uh, of course, with the Democrats in charge, they're very, they're for abortion, and it's been, uh, you know, abortion has always been very free and accessible to any woman who would want to get it in New Jersey, why would they want to go to the extra mile like they're doing now with this Reproductive Freedom Act? It would make sense that there's a lot more than meets the eye behind the bill. But uh, what I want to, uh, I wanted to share, um, Marie, a couple of things. One of them was uh, your website. Um, I invite the people to go to this website. It's New Jersey Right to Life. It's njrtl.org. Um, uh, everything is kept up to date. Marie, you have a rally that you're talking about uh, occurring that, on January 14th in Trenton. That's correct. Um, talk about that a little bit. Sure. So um, every January, uh, usually around the 22nd of January, we have the Rally for Life in Trenton. 
um, at the same time or at a week, within a week is the March for Life in Washington, D.C. And the reason we do it in January is that, that we do it on the anniversary of the Roe versus Wade decision, um, mm -hmm. which occurred on January 22nd, 1973. Uh, we try not to have it the same week as the March for Life because we encourage people to go to both events. Um, and this year, we really want to have a great crowd in Trenton. Um, and we're also going to have um, a walk for life through the streets of Trenton immediately following the rally, which will be led by Reverend Clenard Childress, um, who is the founder of BlackGenocide.org. Very dynamic, very dynamic pastor. Um, and very concerned about the uh, number of uh, you know, babies that are aborted among the minority community. He's been a real, you know, um, champion to expose, you know, the horror of, of the uh, abortion industry targeting um, black babies. Yes. And of course you had your uh, raffle that occurred on the yeah. Gettysburg Address Day. Yes, uh, so we did. that, uh, how'd that go? It went very well, very well. Of course, the person that wins the car is always very happy. Um, and uh, it's a lot of a lot of work, but um, it's a it's a great event. And we have a dinner where we you know we draw the winners. There's four winners. One the first place winner is the car, and then then we have gift cards from Shoprite, a thousand seven hundred fifty and five hundred dollars. And um, but it's it, it's it's a good it's a it's a lot of work, but it's something that everybody looks forward to every year. And people pitch in, and they feel you know a, a sense of obviously. Um, unification in the pro-life movement. And uh, we're just so grateful and happy that, you know, people are so supportive of the work that we do. And of course, you have the information that we've been talking about since the beginning of our time today. The NJ Reproductive Freedom Act is a mm -hmm. shameful extreme bill that needs to be rejected. We've been talking about why it's important for the audience to contact your representatives, tell them that you do not believe in this injustice uh, for those human beings awaiting their birth. And then again, the Stop the NJ Freedom uh, to Kill Act, take action, get the facts here. So all the information you're going to need, folks, is uh, provided here on the uh, Right to Life, New Jersey, right to Life org site that will help you with uh, convincing others of this injustice and motivating you to get involved and to contact your representatives uh, it's imperative that we do it. We've been talking about this lame duck uh, session of the legislature in Trenton. Um, they may try to ram this thing through. Um, even in honor of Loretta Weinberg as a possible legacy bill, Marie, that, that's another impetus behind it as they say goodbye to, uh, to a woman who's been a faithful advocate for uh, the right to murder children in their mother's wombs for decades here in New Jersey. Yeah, um, you know, I, I saw some quotes that she recently were attributed to her, uh, where she said that, you know, she understands that a lot of people have reservations about this and they might want to pare it down, um, but that she still supports, you know, the, the actual original version. And Governor Murphy also said that he supports uh, a more robust version of the Reproductive Freedom Act, which means the most extreme version. Yes. Um, absolutely horrific. Um, yeah, we had billboards up um, and we still have some up that, um, you know, ask people to take action and, and you know, do, do comment about the fact to reject Governor Murphy's extreme abortion bill. And we have the bill numbers on billboards. Um, and we also have some messages that say, reject abortion extremism, women and babies deserve better say no to S3030, A4848. So, you know, we can't rely on the media to get our message out because we know how biased they are. It's just incredible. The Star-Ledger has refused to uh, run any of my op-eds. I have submitted numerous uh, op-eds to them since this bill has been introduced. Um, and they, they, they're they asking me to please, um, you know, if they're going to print it, then I have to actually jump through hoops to show them where in the bill it says this and to link to different articles. And yet the other side is issuing op-eds constantly and they're not being required to do that. They're making all kinds of general statements. My comments in my op-eds are actual quotes from the bill and that's still not good enough for them. So they're just so biased, it's incredible. And that's why we're proud, uh, Marie, to be able to have you on 
as we've had before. And we provide a medium here with the Constitutional Republican virtual conversations to allow conservatives or constitutional Republicans um, to be able to, people who believe in the right to life, to, to be able to have a medium and a platform so that you're able to be given that equal time. Jack Cedarelli always thanks us for providing a balance um, because of what you're describing, uh, you're not able to get the message out. And this is why it's imperative, Marie, that the listeners today and those who will be watching the recorded version of this program, share, share, share with your friends, your family, with other mediums, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And um, this is why it's so important that you're given this opportunity that we can provide and are happy to do it because we're both aligned in wanting to defend the right of life of the human being from conception. And uh, that's what we're gonna be talking about in a moment. And I just wanted to take a moment, uh, Marie, to show the people our YouTube channel and uh, where we have all of these different virtual conversations. But I wanna direct the people to a created play playlist rather, and it's called Abortion Versus Natural Rights. And it's, um, it's uh, six different videos um, that are giving, actually it's seven videos, and we're actually going to be doing an eighth one, but really it goes through the whole history of abortion starting from the beginning of uh, civilization, beginning of time, and to how we could possibly come, uh, Marie, to a point where we would be legally murdering children um, from their mother's wombs. How, how is that possible? How did it all come about? It's been a long, long process. Um, evolution, Darwin, eugenics, Margaret Sager. There have been a lot of different people that have had, uh, including Justice Blackman. There's been a lot of people that have been involved that have been involved uh, to bring it to the point where it would be legally recognized that a child could be taken from its mother's womb and destroyed. So please watch these videos, share them with people. We'll give you a lot of information. We do an in-depth into the uh, Roe decision and um, we show a lot of the contradictions, a lot of what they missed. And we'll talk a little bit about that, Marie, too, as we go forth. And um, I also wanted to share with the people, Marie, um, an article that's in the Heritage Foundation. It's called Dobbs v. Jackson, as we mm -hmm. move into talking about this uh, court case now before the Supreme Court this week. Mm -hmm. Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization, an opportunity to correct a grave error. Mm -hmm. Of course, that grave error, error would be Roe. But it gives the people, Marie, a very good um, historical background. Um, it talks about um, how Justice Blackman uh, really did an essential, he revised the history concerning the abortion laws in this country. The abortion laws in this country, state by state, up until Roe Marie, were um, created to protect not only the woman, but also the child. Mm -hmm. um, of course, with Roe now, the protection of the child has been completely abrogated. Right. And the child, the, 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 violated, the validity of the child and the inviability of the life of the child isn't even recognized. That's right. But it was prior, but Blackman took the opportunity to try to revise the history to substantiate which they, which he intended to do, which was to create the woman's right to an abortion. Yeah, and they succumbed to political pressure. And isn't that interesting that that was one thing that Sonia Sotomayor said that they couldn't do, you know, if they overturned Roe, how could they ever be taken seriously? Because it would be perceived that they succumbed to political pressure. And that's that's exactly what they did in Roe versus Wade. And we have to also remember Roe versus Wade was decided by nine men on the Supreme Court, okay, who basically said that women couldn't succeed unless they killed their children. Well, you know what, as a woman, that is deeply offensive and insulting. So many women have proven that they could certainly succeed and, and obviously have children. And it, it's just a terrible decision that just pitted a mother against the child, divided the nation. It was wrong on so many, so many fronts and so many women uh, who bought the lie deeply regret their decision. And of course, this is an irrevocable decision that you know you cannot undo. It's irreversible and um, it's just incredible. I mean, back in 1973, we're talking almost 50 years ago, 
um, you know, the court said, oh, they can't come to consensus on when life begins. So the judiciary at that point, in man's knowledge, was not in a position to speculate as to the answer. But they did also say, this was Blackman writing, that if it could ever be determined that the fetus was a person, then the fetus would be protected under the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. Well, here we are, 50 years later, it certainly has been proven that the fetus is a human being and therefore a person. You know, it, and, and if you follow the science, right? Oh, you know, follow the science. We're always told, follow the science. Right. If you follow the science, guess what? It's very clear that the right thing to do is to overturn Roe versus Wade and to right the terrible wrong that they created in 1973. And we just look forward to that day and, and pray that that day is, is going to be upon us soon. Right. And uh, let's talk about Dove's tail into uh, what we heard with the oral arguments this week um, mm -hmm. in Dobbs v. Jackson. I wanted to get some of your um, some of your uh, ideas and some of uh, the opinions that you've uh, um, been able to generate as a result of listening to these oral arguments as I have. And immediately what uh, strikes me uh, overall big picture, Marie, is the fact that they're still not they're still not deliberating when the life of the child should become inviolable, which we know is a conception, but they're not even, uh, there's no scientific argument. There's no scientific presentation. Essentially what um, the Solicitor General from Mississippi was doing, Mr. Stewart, very effective, very intelligent, but what he's talking about, really what the objective is, is, is to give the decision on abortion back to the states. That's really the the objective with this uh, particular uh, uh, lawsuit. And right. that's because they take the viability um, aspect or the viability um, recognition of viability from 24 weeks down to 15 in Mississippi. And this is how this suit was um, came about and was recognized uh, by the court in hearing this suit. So really this, the impetus is the objective of those who are on our side who believe in life really is to bring it back to the states. And still, we're kicking the can down the road. And where are we going to recognize the viability of the child from conception, which you just said, the science is clearly proving every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess it remains to be seen. Um, what I was told, I don't know if this is accurate or not, is that they actually made their decision or are making their decision today, but it will not be disclosed until June or July. Now, I don't right. know if that's true or not. So we really need to pray really hard that today that you know the justices' minds and hearts are open to the truth and that you know they recognize, as you said, the life of the child, you know, from the moment of conception. Um, you know, again. We'll have to just see what they actually determine. Um, but I, I understand what you're saying. Um, and if they were able to do that back then and make it the law of the land, why couldn't they just do it you know, now and make it the law of the land, which you know, would take it out of the hands of you know, obviously just states like New Jersey, which would probably be one of the last states to abolish abortion. You know? But um, you know, let me just put it this way. If they overturned Roe versus Wade, it would still be a, a huge, gigantic um, victory for us and a step in the right direction. Um, it would give us the opportunity to certainly continue the dialogue um, in New Jersey and other states. And, and there would be states that have, there are states that already have trigger laws on the book. So if Roe versus Wade is overturned, those states will ban abortion completely. Um, which is wonderful. We will have an interstate commerce nightmare because there will be states like New Jersey that obviously probably will not do that for some time, um, but we'll work towards that end. And, and it's a goal that we'll just continue to work towards. I mean, we have to. And I do believe that, you know, eventually if other states are doing this, there's going to be a lot more discussion about it and the science of prenatal life. And I do believe eventually that the country will all recognize this and it will all happen and, and every state eventually will ban abortion. So it's something that we I have mean, to look forward to. 
Right. And uh, it would be a tremendous, I agree, Marie, that it would be a tremendous uh, victory to give the decision back to the states uh, to where it was prior to Roe v. Wade. Uh, right. And uh, this, of course, was, um, but I thought it was very interesting that uh, Justice Thomas was asking the Solicitor Generals, um, Rickleman, and um, the other Solicitor General about what, you, what, what do they believe that he understood? He said, I understand that abortion is what you're defending. But what constitution, where in the Constitution does it give the right of a person to take it, have an abortion? Mm -hmm. and of course, it gets back to the precedent that was set in Griswold with right of privacy, then it turned into uh, which the, the, the Roe uh, decision, the Roe court uh, used as something used as a, a position of um, substantiating the woman's right of privacy and then it, having an abortion. And then it became a right of liberty. And I thought it, it's in the Casey decision in 93, it moved from privacy mm -hmm. to liberty. And Justice Thomas asked the Solicitor General, you know, what do you base uh, the the abortion law on and giving the what it was giving the woman a the liberty to terminate the, her child and of course and they used the 14th amendment to do this which is preposterous right. 14th amendment was created to give due process to the freed slaves who had just been freed from the civil war and mm -hmm. giving them also citizenship and uh, to and of course, you know about this and other may, people may not know, we get into it in our video series about the idea of penumbras and imaginations and all yes. this different yes. fluffy language yes. trying to substantiate mm -hmm. substantive due process mm -hmm. uh, as to procedural due process, which is the opposite of that. But really, it was really, conf it, was, it was so um, configured, the whole mm -hmm. substantiation for giving a woman a right to... Uh, abortion and the fact that the women would rely or those who believe in abortion that they would rely on a liberty component of a woman having the liberty to terminate her child mm. but marie here's my question why is it the woman why is it the liberty accentuated prior to engaging in sexual uh, conduct which after which could be could 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 propagate a life i mean there are con consequences to everything that we do and there's right. consequences to having that relationship why isn't that the focus why don't we try to eliminate the need to have an abortion and talk about the woman's liberty and the woman's right to make the right decision prior to getting pregnant yeah well yeah it's interesting because i know phil murphy was even saying that you know this week well you know your body is your own and um of course we know that the baby's body is separate from the woman and, and you know right. that you you know, a right to do whatever you want, you know, to plan when and where, you, you know, you want when and if you want a family. And it's like, yeah, you can plan it when and if, but once there's a baby there, guess what? You, it's, there's a decision. Obviously now you're talking about another human being. Okay. So the time to plan is before. Okay. But once there's a child there, there's another life yeah. involved, you know? So right, we, um, we talk about the we talk about there are plenty of choices prior to conception, but very few should be after. Well, yeah. Obviously, once it, once there's a life there, you're talking about another human being, a separate uh, human being. And, you know, that's biology. I mean, you know, in very few cases, women don't just wake up one morning and find themselves, you know, pregnant, obviously. We all know how this works. Um, you know, so it, it's just a, it's a very sad situation. It's a very sad commentary, I think, on our society. Um, you mm -hmm. know, women can do all of that, can do it all and still, you know, succeed and have, you know, a career and a profession. And to, you know, say in Roe versus Wade that, you know, women will not be able to do that if they're mothers is, it's just so horrible. It's so wrong too. And it's just so offensive and insulting to so many women who have been able to do it. And, um, you know, to, to treat women like as if we're just, you know, oh my goodness, you know, you're just like these, you know, <laughs> I don't even know what you call it. We're not strong enough to handle it, you know? It's just, and these are men making the decisions for women. Like, <laughs> it's funny, you know, the feminists, you know, hear their talk about their women's rights and everything. And yet when you look back at the road decision, it was like, the most, I believe, you know, anti-woman decision ever made. No question. 
the question, what's amazing too, uh, Marie, is that you know for centuries it was a blessing. It was considered a great honor. It was it was a wonderful experience to bring another human being in, into the world. The Bible even talks about the importance and the blessing of being a mother and giving birth. But of course, that attitude completely was flipped over its head in the 60s with the rise of the feminists, with the postmodern philosophies, with the ideas of the of the neo-Marxists and so forth. And it was turned right up on down, upside down to where a woman staying at home and keeping the home and having children was looked upon as something that was very, very negative. Whereas for centuries, it was looked at as something that was very, very positive and, and led to the pro progress of society and civilization and, uh, and the husband and the woman working as a team and bringing up their children together. And of course, everything was split apart uh, with the, the 60s and the ideas and the philosophies of the 60s. But Marie, I really think it's going to be important that the court uh, eventually look at applying the constitutional protections of due process to the child from conception. The child should be given the same constitutional rights. Self-evident truth, all men are created equal. That also includes those children being created in their mother's womb. They're human beings. We were all there, uh, no different than those uh, who are being aborted. Uh, but I do believe that the court needs to recognize the constitutionality of the child, the inviability of life of the child, and then give it back to the states and let them decide on um, when that may be forfeited, when, when would be an opportunity or when would a divorce, when would abortion um, be permissible according to the state law. I think that's the and that's where you could see uh, Judge Kavanaugh was going there with his questioning. Mm -hmm. And I also thought, Marie, that uh, Justice Alito was very effective uh, with his questioning. He was really, I believe he could have, he may have been the most, um, he was the most, um, I think, most successful in, uh, in questioning the solicitors, in my estimation. And he's from New Jersey. Yeah. He doesn't get often talked about. He doesn't get yeah. often talked about. If, and I, I encourage the people to listen to this. C-SPAN has the oral arguments, mm -hmm. um, and listen to the uh, to the conversation back and forth. It's very very enlightening. And the solicitors uh, on the other side, uh, like uh, Solicitor uh, Reckleman, um, very very adept and very very qualified to defend the uh, other side's position. And um, uh, they were worthy. Uh, we would call, consider them adversaries, Marie, Marie mm -hmm. but they were very effective and uh, they, mm -hmm. they are knowledgeable. They know what they're talking about. They understand uh, constitutional law. And what a lot of talk was about stare decisis, which right. of course uh, would be, which would be put aside if this uh, ruling is in favor of uh, Dobbs. But didn't um, Justice Kavanaugh talk about stare decisis if the, if the court didn't uh, overturn certain decisions where we would be in this country today, I thought that was really a very good statement that he made. Very intuitive. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. It was very good. I thought Kavanaugh was uh, behind Alito the most effective. And Amy and, uh, I also talking about adoption and the safe yeah. haven law. I thought that was really quite interesting. I mean, I think you know that we wrote the safe haven law here in New Jersey. We were one of the first states to pass a, a, such a law back in 2000. And it has saved, I believe, 78 babies' lives. And that's one of the things this Reproductive Freedom Act would basically nullify the safe haven law because- And, you, no and you, you, wrote that, you wrote that law, correct? Yes, I did. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a yeah, wonderful I, accomplishment. I have to say, Thank you. I was just recently at the hospital and I saw they actually had a sign right outside the hospital that said safe haven law, you know, you know, you, you can drop your, it's a safe haven, you know, um, location. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was, I think it was probably the only legislation that I worked on that got unanimous support in both houses of the legislature. Um, but I'm happy that, you know, it is in place and it has saved some lives and hopefully will save more. But again, this reproductive Thank freedom God. act will gut it. This, this Reproductive Freedom Act will gut the safe haven law. So. Well, let's hope not. And uh, wow, what a great accomplishment. And uh, God bless you for that 
uh, just legis legislation. There's, a, there's an example of justice. Um, I also wanted to talk to you, Marie, about the fact that we heard Sotomayor uh, again use the religious aspect yeah. in trying to determine when life begins. Uh, this is the same stale argument that they used in Roe. Uh, that they continue to use in case. And what's amazing to me, Marie, is, is that I it's know. as if they deny the humanity of the child that's in the womb. Well, and we've know, heard Hillary Clinton, we, we've heard Hillary Clinton say that a child doesn't afford constitutional protections or isn't recognized as a human being until the child leaves its mother's womb. That is preposterous. You know, they're still relying on all the antiquated, you know, art arguments and, and the slogans from 50 years ago, it, they're the ones that want to go back. They say, we won't yes. go back. You are back. You're back in 1973. Right. The rest of the That's world right. is in 2000, you know, 2022. I mean, it's like, right. really wake up. How can you just be so yeah. ignorant of the science? You know, how could you just have such blinders on? Um, you know, we have, we have ultrasound technology. We can see these babies in the womb, sucking their thumbs, all organs are present by eight yeah. weeks. I mean, it, all that has to happen is the babies just get bigger and you know need to grow, obviously. Yeah. And we all start our lives that way. And we know babies feel pain. And the reason we know that is because embryologists and those who, who study in the field of um, neurology have told us this. And when doctors can perform life-saving surgeries on babies in the womb, Okay, um, they give the baby and the mother anesthesia because they recognize they're both patients and they recognize yeah. that the baby in the womb feels pain. And for Sonia Sotomayor to say, oh, to compare a baby in the womb with a brain dead person um, who, if you touch the bottom of their foot, they'll recoil, un unbelievable ignorance. I mean, I just can't believe how ignorant she is. <laughs> it's just incredible, incredible. Yeah. That's right. And what's amazing too, Marie, is, is that they don't go in there as Justice Sotomayor. She's going to defend that agenda. She's going to defend. Uh, she's going to defend pro-life she, or pro-choice. She's going to defend uh, abortion, yeah. the availability of abortion for a woman. Yeah. And she's not going to listen even to the science. Wow. And I thought yeah. that I thought I, I thought this the solicitor um, store uh, may have she could have done a better job in explaining the science that is proving that the child does feel pain. I right. thought that that was, that was, he was, he was a little weak in that aspect. He mm -hmm. could have been a little bit more, had more evidence there to prove otherwise. And, but again, I'm, she, I'm a man. Yeah, go ahead. And what if she, she actually said, it's only a minority of fringe, fringe. Yes. Yeah. What did she say? Fringe doctors, Even if it's one fringe scientists who believe that? Oh my goodness, like, wow. I, you know, talk about, you know, wearing your colors on your sleeve. I mean, this woman really just is so transparent. She clearly, clearly is biased. She is not in any way open-minded about this issue. She is lock, stock and barrel <laughs> with the pro-abortion side. I mean, unbelievable to actually, you know, um, disparage, you know, scientists, you know, to say just a minority, you know, fringe group of, you know, a minority group of doctors. Unbelievable. I just thought that was so just um, really so unbecoming, you know, of a, of a justice yeah. of the Supreme Court, you know? Yeah, I, I was I was shocked by that. Mm -hmm. And it seems as though, uh, and I have great respect for uh, Justice Breyer uh, um, as an intellect, uh, but you could you could tell during the uh, during the questioning that he, it seemed as though he was uh, veering in a different direction um, with some of his uh, questions and some of his comments, mm -hmm. and um, and you could see where Justice Roberts is going to be the guy who's going to be in the middle of this thing. He's gonna um, he's gonna do everything he can to try to go over with the other side as opposed to the conservative side. But um, many people are, believe that, uh, that the, this uh, Dobbs is going to be held up, and that the Mississippi law will indeed be held up, and, uh, and uh, that will change everything, and that's what we're hoping for, of course. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting for the people to, to listen to the oral arguments. They can become more familiar um, with what those arguments are, but 
I'm just amazed that they don't still don't address when the, uh, the viability of life truly begins, which is a conception, and then giving that giving that inviability of life constitutional protection. We're still talking yeah. about the woman's right to an abortion, and that is yeah. is flawed in itself. Well, I mean, they also determine that there is no constitutional right to abortion. Um, yes. That could be a whole other, you know, aspect of the decision and where it might lead and go. So um, we're not sure. You know, we'll have to see um, because really there is no. We know there's no right to abortion in the Constitution. And no. when Harry Blackman wrote the decision, I mean, he was really grasping at straws to try and make his case and. One of the things that he did is, well, this is an unborn, unborn child. So therefore, it's not protected under the 14th Amendment to the Constitution because of the 14th Amendment said that all persons born and naturalized in the United States are entitled to full protection of the law. This is now an unborn. I mean, how, ri how ridiculous can you get? Yes, you know? Just, that's right. Um, and, and they took... No, but they talk, they, you know, story decisis, common law, well, William Blackstone, the great British jurist, who was an influence on all of our founders, he even said that the child who is in the womb is recognized as being born already through con in conception. So mm -hmm. they recognize the humanity of the child um, all through the common law before the uh, Declaration of Independence in our Constitution. And that was the precedent that it was established in the states up until Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. That's right. Absolutely. So the history history is on our side. And Marie, also, I want to thank you. No, go ahead. I just say, you know, you get any textbook on embryology, it talks yep. about when life begins, the human life begins, you know. So uh, again, you know, to say it's a fringe group is just so ridiculous and so untrue. Yeah. That's right. And I saw an article this week, Marie, that talked about the spark of light that occurs once yeah, the sperm. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah. the spark of light. Let there be light. That was the first Miracle. Uh, words yeah. from God. Let there be light uh, that we yeah. know of. And of course, that's, that's right. a law of nature and nature's God in itself. Absolutely. Marie, I want to thank you. For, I want to thank you very much for joining me. Um, let's please stay uh, in touch and working together. Uh, I ask all of the listeners and the viewers to please share. Uh, please go to the njrighttolife.org site. Um, call your representatives, let them know that you don't want the Reproductive Freedom Act to be passed. The Democrats are going to try to ram it through mm -hmm. the last minute while everyone is busy Christmas shopping and thinking about Christmas dinner. As Marie said earlier, they take advantage of these times. Don't can let I, it happen. Can I add something here, JR? Um, Absolutely. We, and also, you can remind them that you know they're running, they're all running again in two years and two years is a very short time and we will we are watching and we will remember um so that's an important thing to, to mention i mean obviously we should always be respectful and polite and we yes. shouldn't threaten anybody but we can just say i right. know you're running again in two years and i am watching how you vote and i'm asking you to please vote no i think that's important that's right and i also want to, to let the listeners and the viewers know marie um, how appreciative we all are of you and the work that you've done for some tw 20 to 25 years now um, with the New Jersey Right to Life. You've seen representatives come and go, but yet you're like that steady, you're the, like that steady rock that you can't move, that you're out there. And of course, with the, uh, with the law that you help um, pass um, and write up the legislation for and uh, um, that's even more reason why we want to eliminate uh, this uh, Reproductive Freedom Act and um, all the work that you've done. Uh, you're to be commended and to congratulate. And we're very thankful, all of us in New Jersey, oh, thank you, who believe in the right to live. And of course, as the constitutional Republicans, we hold Republicans accountable to protecting the life of those awaiting birth in the womb. Slavery was a horrible injustice. And our Republican Party was created to stop the expansion mm -hmm. of slavery. The Republican Party, once again, needs to reinvigorate itself, take its high moral ground, and make sure that the expansion of abortion no longer 
is available and that we stop, we stop it and that we protect the right of the life of the child. There are aligned principles and that's why we as constitutional Republicans believe first and foremost in the right to life. It's my pleasure being with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marie. I'll be talking to you soon. And all of our listeners, please share and like this video. Contact your representatives. Let them know to vote no. You do not support the Reproductive Freedom Act. S3030, A4848. Any other information, you can go to our NJC, our Facebook page, or, or go to the NewJerseyRightToLife.org website. Thank you very much. And remember what Lincoln said. He said, liberty to all. And that also includes those awaiting birth. Thank you, Marie. Thank you so much, JR. Have a good, have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas, Bye -bye. everybody. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. God bless.